There is one major flaw with the new TaylorMade QI10 lineup. There is in fact only one club in the whole range that lives up to its title. QI, Quest for Inertia, 10, the 10K MOI target is only achieved by the QI10 Max driver. Pushing that factor one side, the new QI10 Max Fairway boasts an ultra high MOI construction in a confidence inspiring 200cc head. Now I don't know what ultra high MOI actually means, but I do know a 200cc fairway wood has me intrigued. Is this a fairway wood for the masses? And could this be a better alternative than a driver for many of us? Will the internal mass pads that are positioned for maximum forgiveness with weight move to the extreme low back make this tailor-made easiest to hit fairway wood ever? Will the all-new Infinity Crown provide a clean, uninterrupted view and address and optimise performance? And perhaps the enlarged face profile will inspire confidence and generate ball speed? Or should I just stop reading from TaylorMade's website and give this thing a whack? Yeah, I'll do exactly that. A few whacks on the course, a few on the sim, and I will tell you why the QI10 Max is very interesting golf club, even though it should be called QI Max Fairway Wood. So in my head, this is what I want from a fairway wood. I want to play it off the tee. I want it to be long, so ball speed, good launch, and confidence at address. If I'm choosing to play three wood instead of driver from the tee, then what am I losing in distance? Off the fairway, I want high launch. I want to land soft, and I want to know my numbers, i.e. where does it fit in my bag? Now one thing you lot can't complain about, well no doubt some of you will, TaylorMade offer every golfer an option in the fairway wood lineup. As well as the QI10 Max, there is of course the fast low spin QI10 Tour, or the standard QI10 with options from 3 through to 9 wood. There really is a fairway wood for everyone. Well not everyone, you know who you are. Now in the looks department I've got to say I think TaylorMade have nailed it with the QI10 lineup this year. The standout is the Tour model in the fairway woods. I mean this is just so easy on the eye and I love the sliding weight concept. So I've just finished collecting what is some really interesting data and none more so than the shot that I finished off there which is pretty much perfect in terms of three wood capabilities in my hands with my kind of club head speed. It's hit every parameter on the button. The question is what product achieved that kind of data? I'm going to start off by hitting the max product. What I'm expecting to see is a high launching ball that maybe uh, have a little bit too high of a spin on it. Then I'm going to move into the tour product. Now the tour product, I'm going to be expecting the kind of opposite really, a lower launching ball perhaps, a lower spinning ball, but I don't want to become too low in either of those areas either. So two very different models. What I want to see first of all from the data is do they live up to expectation? So first of all, the tour model is set up in a neutral position in terms of the sliding weight option. So we can push it further forward, we can push it further back. And it's set at 15 degrees, whereas the max product is a, uh, well, you've got no mess in there. It's 16 degrees, not a lot you can do about it. The CG is way back. So that data, is it what you expected? For me, probably a little bit surprising in the spin number on the tour model and a little bit of positivity, to be honest with you, in the fact that it was a lot more playable than I expected. One of the big issues that I noted in last year's model, the first time we seen it in that stealth lineup, was the tour model sliding weight gave a very much a harsher sound and feel to the face, or at least that's what I detected. If you look down at a dress, obviously they have very different head types. I think that 200cc is, you know, it borders on sort of mini driver, don't forget it's 300cc, so we're getting something in between that and a traditional sort of fairway wood, and I think that is going to be confidence inspiring for many, as is that 16 degrees. But the other point to mention is with the tour model, I can make adjustments and I've already said that you know the idea of not having adjustability in any product fairway wood type uh, for this kind of budget I think it's a little bit poor I think you should be able to adjust that max product as you should just uh, the standard as well but both of them are fixed hosel and the only adjustability is in the tour lineup now for me, what I'm thinking is, well, hang on a minute, I can add a little bit of loft, probably increase spin. I can also shift that weight backwards and uh, create a higher launching ball as well. So straight away, now the tour model has got, apart from it being a little bit more compact, a little bit smaller, maybe less confidence inspiring for many. For me, I'm thinking I've got a lot more flexibility with that product in hand and probably can get my numbers tweaked to a position that I want them to be. And that's something that I can't necessarily do with the Max product. I'm just swayed towards that tour model and I am gonna make a few tweaks and see what happens. 
So that there is the 50 gram weight and it is substantial and you can certainly see why this would make a difference to uh, any performance in a club when you consider we've got sort of maybe 25, 28 grams in max driver heads at the very back then to shift around this kind of weight is very significant. Well, awesome start. Right, we'll leave it there. Ain't gonna get any better than that, is it? Let's be fair. No deviation in ball flight. Um, let's see those numbers. 208 carry, 25 spin, launching 10.5, 17 yards in height. This is where it's a bit difficult for me to sort of monitor indoor performance. We're struggling right now in the UK in the fact that the weather is horrendous and I'm gonna, like I said, struggle to get them out in this review. But it kind of looked different than that and the ball flights even on the screen look different than that. Um, I would probably still want to see that ball launching just a tad higher for me. So I'm, I'll hit one more ball, but then I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to add a little bit of loft into this three wood to see if it can produce real uh, sort of optimal ball flight that I would be looking for in that kind of window. Okay, the last few shots that you see me hit are just like, I mean, it's 218, it's just dropped off a tad. But that was me sort of full tilt. We're getting over 90 mile an hour with a uh, three wood shaft in hand. So that's creeping up to where sort of my driver shaft swing is because it's only sort of 95, 96. But you can really get someone out of this club and uh, you can really play, manipulate that club face a little bit as well. So from the sort of high, shots landing into greens to the shots towards the end were the ones that you'd want to land on fairways and kick on from a par four. So the big deal for me with the tweaks that I made is just the versatility in this club that you're not gonna see found in either of the other two models to be quite honest with you. But then if you're leaning towards the max, it's probably not what you're looking for. So out of curiosity, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch right back to the other end and I'm gonna go to this uh, max product. Just see what it does now. Um, sort of all out swings. What does it do distance wise and spin? <laughs> Get in the hole. Right, ignore that. That was off the bottom grooves. I think it's a very positive result, but uh, in terms of data, it's a 200 yard carry and a launch of 5.7 degrees. We ain't learning a lot from that. Right, let's try and get back to where we were with the swing. Down the right, withdraw. I see the difference in the ball flight. It's so high. That was an odd ball flight in terms of the uh, switching from right to left. 211 carry, that spin jumps up, three and a half thousand revs, 12.8 peak. So it's just a totally different ball flight altogether. Um, I'm not saying, I mean, I've hit plenty of shots with this. It's very visible. This thing does things very differently. I must admit, it's a club I enjoy hitting. You can see visually again, look at the launch. I mean, that's just coming down with 
That's a big ball. Yeah. 227 carry, two and a half thousand revs of spin, 13.5 launch, peak height at 29, 138 ball speed, off a of three wood with 92 mile an hour club head speed. Look, there's plenty to uh, sort of go through in that data. I want to go out on the fairways and try these two, but if I'm being honest with you, Trackman's been really useful for identifying just what makes these two different. Probably exactly what we thought. However, there are a few surprises in there. So what I'm looking at is a set of numbers that uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just throw some examples up on screen because I've hit a lot of golf balls. And don't get me wrong, they're all not perfect by any means, but what I'm trying to get is uh, a fair judgment of a cross section. Like I said, when I started this video, those numbers that you're seeing are, in the case of the QI-10 Max Fairway Wood, it does what we thought it would do. Um, and by that, I mean, spins a little bit higher, launches a little bit higher. Carry distance was over that 200 yard mark, which is where I'd expect it to be with my club head speed. So we did everything that uh, I would hope it should do. I've said for a while now that we're getting a little bit confused with what forgiveness is. And when this has sort of, uh, you know, a maximum ultra high MOI, um, I think what we've got to remember is what maybe you and I interpret as forgiveness. I always think of it as forgiving our bad shots and to a degree that is, but like I said in previous videos, it's all about twisting and talk and, you know, not necessarily forgiving our bad shots. So if you look at a cross section right here, that's what forgiveness looks like. It does nothing in terms of helping you be straighter, in my opinion, not greatly. I think forgiveness for me is how a ball reacts in off centre hits, what does it do in terms of ball speeds, is that sweet spot getting bigger, but ultimately my swing is what's making a ball go to extreme left or extreme right, and that's an issue that I've got to sort out personally. You then go into the QI10 Tour, which first of all, I didn't really, I wouldn't say that that is less forgiving than the Max, again, that's not something that I would recognise, but what I do recognise is a very different performing golf club just as we expected it to be. But I think this club has come on far greater than what, let's be honest, the Max is replacing what the HD lineup was in the previous Stealth 2, and this is a continuation of what we've seen in that Titanium Wood last year um, in this Tour model. The Tour model for me is, has gone on leaps and bounds. It feels a lot, lot better to me. That's the big deal. Um, I think the performance is, seems to be very consistent off the club face. I got numbers pretty much straight off the bat everywhere, every shot I hit. Maybe the direction wasn't exactly where I'd want it to be every time, but the performance was um, very consistent indeed, so super impressed with that. Um, so yeah, the question is, let me just close that for a minute. We, uh, the one thing I was looking at was the price tag. We're looking at £379 here for a three wood, that's the QI Tour. And, it's just gone bonkers. I can't deny the fact that that for a fairy wood is ridiculous. That's like driver money just a couple of years ago. Uh, the 309 for basically the standard QI10 fairway or the max. I've got to admit, for me personally, if I'm at that level of expenditure, I'm going in for the QI10 tour. I'd rather spend the 70 quid and get that adjustability because, like I've already stated, it allowed me to make tweaks and changes that I couldn't do in the max product and ultimately that's what led to the better ball flight the better spin number the better launch and the better overall carry distance that i was looking to dial in will i end up with a three wood in the bag this year i don't know i'll be honest with you i'm still not it's the it's the versatility bit it's as simple as that um but i do like that qi 10 tour i really do and I think for me, the obvious thing was if I was playing on a Lynx course in Scotland uh, on a bit of a breezy day, I'd put it in the bag. Um, I could, I'd want to hit fairways with it, low spinning, bounding along those fairways, superb, use it all day long. Um, but am I going to use it enough times to justify 380 quid for a club that I think still collects a few cobwebs along the way? But um, I've got to admit, I'm tempted. Anyway. That's me done. Let me know what you think of this. It was a bit different. It was a slightly deeper dive to a degree into the, the numbers and the data. Some of you will appreciate that. Some of you will prefer to see stuff outside and maybe 
a mix of the two is still the way to go. But that was nice to identify what clubs are doing, whether they are what they say they are, essentially. Right, thanks for watching. I'll, uh, I'll catch you all very soon. And uh, as I say, let me know what you think.